Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Susan Taylor, and she actually has a podcast on our channel that I want you to visit. Her uh, podcasts are outstanding. Also, she is a part of our podcast community, and she helps people with their mission to help them live their life to their full potential. And she really has a lot of different programs and things that she offers. And today she's going to talk about the importance to know thyself. And she's going to explain exactly what that means. But she she is amazing. So turn on your ears and listen carefully because the advice and the tools and techniques that she has is going to definitely change your life and improve you to no extent. So Susan, it's so it's so a pleasure to have you back on the show. So what do you exactly mean when you talk about the importance to know thyself? Thank you. Um, thanks again for the invitation to come back. Um, I really enjoyed uh, having these conversations with you. With regard to know thyself, the way I like to think about it is the importance of really understanding who you are from the perspective of maybe your values, what excites you, what triggers you, all the different elements and components that make up who you are as a way to then start to learn how to be authentic to yourself mm -hmm. in ways that are um, helpful, in ways that again, ignite passion, and also in ways that challenge you with regard to growth and development. So in the work that I do, especially as a facilitator and a coach, and I do a lot of work around mindsets and different um, ways that we think about with regard to, again, understanding ourselves more deeply as a way to then build our businesses and live our lives in alignment with the understandings that we gain when we know thyself. Yeah. I think it's so important to understand who we are as a person. Many people go through life and they they don't know really who they are, what their purpose is, what their mission is, or they 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 have aspirations, but they are either fearful of, of attaining them, they don't know how to how to how to attain them, or they just might have problems with their self-worth and, and they don't feel like they're worthy enough to actually reach their goals that they've always had in the back of their head. And I, you know, to find it, to realize who your authentic, authentic self is, I think is so important because a lot of people don't know who their authentic self is. A lot of people go through life and they go through life in their forties and fifties and sixties, and they still don't know really deep down inside who their authentic self is. Now, when people come to you and they're looking to really figure out what's going on with them, you know, who they are as a person, what their true potential is, you know, what their purpose in life is. Is, you know, what are some of the things that, you know, some of the steps they can take when they're trying to figure out who their authentic self is? Absolutely. So I think the first thing I would say as part of an answer to that question, Stacy, is to give yourself ease and grace first and foremost, because one of the things that I think is important to remember is that we're actually conditioned not to know ourselves. Yeah. Think about, you know, maybe when we go to school for example, right? And we have to act a certain way or behave a certain way. And there's certain rules and different protocols. And oftentimes, for example, you know, um, maybe one of the students who would be titled or labeled as like the class clown keeps getting in trouble. But this person and part of who that person is, is really about their humor yeah. and using that humor, right? To relate to others. So definitely give yourself ease and grace because we are conditioned actually to, I think, move, or, move further and further away from ourselves, which links to the second part of the answer, which for me at least is when I can start to understand my values, that's when I really start to then gain a deeper understanding of who I am as a human being. Right. Because our values are linked to our emotions. And those emotions are linked to the things that propel us toward a dream or a goal or take us further away from it. And when yeah. I can use the values as kind of a guide to start to determine and discern for myself where I want to place my energy, it's a big shift. And I think yeah. that's the first step. The values piece for me, I, I think is the first step. When people, when people think about what their values are, do, is, is, are there some techniques they could use? Like, are, you know, what are some techniques that people could probably, you know, even begin in their own homes to try to figure out 
some of the values that they have and figure out who their who their authentic self is. Absolutely. So part of that is uh, determine when you feel the most joy, determine when you feel um, awe or inspiration or some of those things that like you feel it in your body, like maybe you get goosebumps or yeah. maybe you just start smiling and you can't stop. Right. Right. And then with regard to the values piece, because a lot of people don't understand or are or are not taught, right? How to even think about creating a set of core values. Because listen, yeah. as children, we are imprinted by the age of eight, which means we have our full set of beliefs by age eight, which are indirectly linked to values that we don't really even know about. So uncovering them is kind of an awesome experiment and mystery that we can yes. do. So one of the things that's really easy to do is if you just go online and um, Google uh, a values sheet, you'll find all kinds of different um, uh, documents that show hundreds of words that are values. Print yeah. it off, take a read, and then start to really think about what those words mean for you. Right. And try to get them down to 10. And that's mm -hmm. going to be hard because there's hundreds of words on this sheet of paper, right? Yeah. Um and I, I hear this all the time. People are like, well, I've got like 25. I'm like, mm, we want to get it down three to five with regard to like core values. But that's yeah. a way to at least start and explore. And then link to that. One last thing is, um, you know, whether you like to journal or take walks or maybe you're a jogger or maybe you find a way to have like contemplative or relaxed calm time each uh, each day for a few moments, you can start yeah. to really reflect on these words. And, and the meaning that the words invoke in you and start to form your own intentional set of core values. You know, I find it so interesting that you had mentioned that by age eight, you know, people are taught their values already. And I find that when people grow up and they're in a setting where, you know, the parents might be very dominant, you know, or they might come from a very over opinionated family or a very strong bonded family. And, you know, these values are consistently inputted in, inside of them that a lot of times I, I see people, you know, they have these core values, but they're not their own. They're the values that were taught to them by their family members and the environment that they grew up in. And then they get lost as they get older because it's not they're not happy because these are not the real values that make them up. They aren't. It's not them. You know, it's mm -hmm. what they were taught, but it's not really them who they are as a person. And then I think it affects them emotionally as they get older. You know, I, I've seen that with a lot of people. You know, what what is your intake take about that? So I love what you're sharing here. It automatically brings up a story I share a lot when I'm working uh, in different businesses with teams and, and we're doing this values work. Because to your point, not only are we oftentimes living someone else's values, when we start to discover the ones that really resonate with who we are as individuals, it then becomes incredibly important to share how we're defining those words. So the story I share a lot with one of my colleagues that I work with is when we were working in an organization where there was um, a CEO who was from the Netherlands, so he was Dutch, and um, the company was a multinational organization, and we were doing some work in Africa with a management team there in um, one of their divisions in Africa. And again, working on the values, one of the values that emerged for the organization, because we can do this for companies as well, right? And we can get to that in a minute. One of the uh, core prince, uh, core values that came up for this organization was the value of respect, mm -hmm. the value of respect. And fast forward to where the Dutch CEO was going to Africa to visit, to have team meetings with this management team. And every time that he would um, enter the room and they'd be in their meetings, the Africans would get very, very quiet. And he was starting to get frustrated. He didn't understand. Well, long story short, once we were able to create a dialogue around that value of respect, Respect. What we learned was for the Africans, respect for them meant that when there was an elder in the room or an authoritative figure in the room, you respect that person by being quiet. But for the Dutch CEO, respect was to hear input expressed through voice and ideas. So once they were able to decide, sorry, to discern what the definition was of the value of respect, they were able to work to, together in a very different way. Wow. 
And it's pretty amazing because I think sometimes people don't realize, but you know, according to the culture you come from or the environment you come from, you know, the word respect, you know, can mean many different things for many different people. And I think sometimes, you know, that's where people have conflict, it seems, is because their definition is not what another person's definition is. And 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 the communication isn't there yet. So they it, instead of working together productively, you know, they they have problems because they're on different levels. Their thought levels, you know, are different. Mm -hmm. It's what really true, really true. And I think it's it's why it's important for me over time, once the core values are established and they'll, they'll shift based on, you know, different phases of life and what have you. What really becomes more important is is exactly what you're talking about. It's the dialogue around them. Yes. And that's what builds the relationship. So when my uh, spouse or my boss or my colleague or my child has a deeper understanding of not just what my values are by listing them, but more importantly, how I'm living by them and how I feel when I feel triggered. Because when we feel triggered, what it typically means nine times out of 10 is that our values are somehow being threatened. Yes. And with that awareness or understanding, I can kind of just like hit the pause button a little bit and say, okay, to my, to my daughter, for example, like ask myself internally, like, why do I feel triggered? And when I know myself enough to understand that, then I can shift it and have a different kind of conversation or dialogue right. with my daughter. Cause it's not the person who's triggering, triggering me. It's a behavior. Yes. It's a behavior. Yeah, I don't think people realize that either. You know, it's not it's not the person, it's the behavior that they exemplified that really causes the the um the feelings and 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 the the way the person is reacting, you know, they're upset, they're overwhelmed because not because of, you know, the, what they said, it was the behavior that they exemplified. That's so true. That's so true. Yeah, and then for example, when we can start to understand that more fully because let's face it, the behavior of a child, for example, uh, an infant, mm -hmm. they cry all the time. I'm a mom. I've been through a couple of experiences with my two daughters, right? Um, but that's what they're that's what they're born to do. Like they need to do that. It's a way to notify us about something. And yet, what oftentimes happens when maybe we're in a restaurant, or maybe we're in church, or maybe we're you know in a in a doctor's office, and the child starts to cry, what do we try to do immediately? Shush, 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 try to shush them try to get them to be quiet instead of maybe understanding that it's the behavior, not the child. And that behavior, right. especially for an infant is telling us something that the infant needs. And when yeah. we can kind of understand it a little bit differently, we handle it differently. And I think that's significant. Oh, it definitely is. It definitely is. Now, when, when, after you, the core values, you know, you understand about core values and then you start some of the techniques that you had mentioned about core values, what comes next? So for me, what comes next is once I have those, then I get to play with them a little bit in my day to day. So for mm -hmm. example, the values are going to be the things that kind of give me the direction and guide, if you will, my behaviors around so certain things. And so when I have those values in mind, then I can start to live them in my life, in my business, with my team, with my colleagues, my friends, my family. And as part of that, start to create some processes or structures around me that actually help me better live into them. Right. So one example that's really simple, I think really powerful is look at my calendar, look at my daily calendar. And when I look at the daily calendar and I see all the different tasks and activities that are listed, how do I feel inside when I look at each one of those? Right. And how does that then tap into the three to five values maybe that I'm playing with at the moment? Right. And how can I then shift the calendar to where I have less have tos because yeah. of someone else's value Right. and create what I call more love tos? Yes. Yes. And to do that on a weekly or a daily or even an annual basis to keep checking in with myself to just ask whether I'm putting energy into things that fuel me and feel passionate and tap into those higher aspects of myself linked to my values or maybe pulling me further away from those things and start to create some harmony between the two because we need both. Yeah. We need both. Not everything on my calendar, I jump up and 
down for joy around, right? Like, you know, some of the more, for me, some of the more tedious administrative sorts of things like doing my taxes, but they have to get done. So how can I, you know, balance um, more things that I love to do with the things that I have to do, like go to the doctor or meet with the boss or whatever. Right. I see that a lot of people sometimes get overwhelmed when they look at their mm -hmm. tasks, they see the stuff they love to do, you know, so they're, they're, they're happy about doing that stuff that, like you said, that stuff brings them joy, but then there are some tasks that they know automatically are going to stress them out. Do they change their mindset and they, you know, to help them so they don't get stressed out? Like how do people deal with, you know, having to do the da daily tasks in their life that need to get done? And they know that it kind of stresses them because there's things that they really don't want to do, but they have to do. Sure. Sure. So there's a reframe there for me as well. So I shift my have tos to get tos. So mm -hmm. let's use the, you know, tax filing um, example, because I think it's a simple one. And it's, at least for me, it's something that feels very tedious. I get to do my taxes and I get to do them in a way that feels fulfilling because when I'm paying taxes, I'm making money in my business and my mm -hmm. business is an extended reflection of who I am and my values. So it's a way to just, again, keep connecting back to the values piece all right. the time. And as part of that, um, I've created what I call a passion planner. Mm -hmm. And um, I have, it's a daily, a weekly and uh, a monthly opportunity to, yes, put in all of your different tasks and appointments. And at the same time, there's areas all over the planner for love tos and yeah. get tos and maybe motivational quotes that inspire me or a place to write those values or the right. ones I want to try to, you know, experiment and play with today or the ones I want to be more intentional around. So it's just a way, whatever works for, for all of you in your own way, link, link it to that because then it becomes a love to. And then it yeah. gets, you know, it's more fun to schedule actually when you're doing it that way. Right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. And so what are other, other things that you focus on when, so you deal with the, the, the core values, you deal with the mm -hmm. tasks and really prior, prioritizing them and, and, you know, learn how to deal with, you know, um, the ones that maybe uh, build a little stress and learn different ways to deal with that. So they actually become more fulfilling and they're not so stressful when you do have to do them and focus more on the joyful stuff and, and really trying to change your mindset. So like when you're doing your day-to-day, -day, you know, tasks, you're on a, on a better mind frame, more positive mind frame, and you're actually accomplishing more and probably feeling better at the end of the day. And what are some of the other tasks when it comes to that you feel are important with understanding thyself? So when you, when you deal with those two, two uh, objectives, what's the next thing that you really have to focus on when you're trying to understand yourself? Right. I'd say it would be understand what drains you. Because if there's something that's draining you, at least in my experience, it's typically um, telling you that your heart's not in it, or maybe your soul isn't in it. And yeah. maybe something is taking you away from your deeper passions or your deeper purpose of what you not only like to do, but what you feel called to do. I think we've talked about that before, what we feel called to do. Yes. So one way to do that is to definitely build in some space for that, for creativity, mm -hmm. you know, build in breaks just to hit the pause button. I mean, again, linked to energy, there is no time management as far as I'm concerned. We all have 168 hours in a week. It's finite Every human being gets the same number of hours. However, if we pay attention to managing our energy, for me, that's something really different. Right. So how am I building in a break between my, you know, completely booked Monday, yeah. right? Even five minutes to just take a breath or go yeah. outside or again, uh, an inspiring creative moment to just like reflect or don't think about anything if, if, if possible. So I think yeah. those are really important. Those are really important. I think that's so true because even when I feel, I feel, um, you know, I've been working all day and then, you know, at some point I start to feel the energy start to drain, you know, and then automatically I know I need to stop no matter where I am. I have to stop and I have to do something productive or joyful to get my energy back and renewed. Because if you listen to your body, your body tells you when you've had enough and you have to slow down. For sure. For sure. And especially these days, right after the pandemic, where I think a lot of us anyway, are still in situations, I know I am where 
I'm sitting at this desk a lot on Zoom doing different uh -huh. things. And so again, when I link it to managing energy, you know, just like a computer needs a reboot, our brain needs a reboot. And research says our brain needs a reboot every 90 minutes. Yeah. So how can you even like use your, um, your watch or your phone to set an alert for every 60 or 90 minutes, just the way, even if you just get up and walk around. Yeah. Just kind of like disrupt yourself from sitting at the desk in front of the screen yeah. to then leave your desk and be on another screen in most cases. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And it's funny that you say every 90 minutes, I'm like, wow, how many times have I passed that 90 minute mark? <laughs> Because you sometimes get so caught up with things, you know, mm -hmm. you don't realize it, but it could actually hurt you overall in the, in the long term. I think so. I definitely think so. Too much, you know, too much screen time, I guess, is something that's become a thing with all of us, you know, and not just uh, what it does with regard to our relationships with other and even our relationship with ourselves. We're constantly like going external, you know, yeah. to go on the social media account or look at the text that just came in or the email on the laptop. So again, linking it to know thyself, know when I'm overdoing it there as well and find yeah. ways to pair back so that I'm not constantly going external of myself. Cause the only thing I ever have any true control over is me. Yes. Everything else is a condition that I cannot influence more often than not. So that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, How do I want to live my life and put your stake in the ground and actually act on the way you say you want to live it? That makes yes. a big difference in everything that we do. Oh, 100%. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Now, what is the next thing after you're working on, you know, on, on avoiding to drain yourself and you start incorporating more healthier tactics into your life so you can live a more productive life and, and not let life get the best of you, you know, because sometimes we get so involved in things that life, you said, like you said, it just drains you, you know, if you don't take those breaks and you don't really replenish yourself, what are, what are some of the other things, what, you know, about, you know, helping yourself, you know, um, taking care of yourself and so forth. Yeah, for me, again, it's whatever works for each individual. But for me, it's it's good to have little reminders everywhere. So yeah. like if you were in my office right now, off to my right, I've got a big whiteboard. It takes up a whole wall. Yeah. And it's just got little reminders or pictures or things that fill me with joy, almost like a vision board in a way. But I'd mm -hmm. say like a vision board plus. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And these things that we call post-it notes, like these, these are lifesavers for me. I've got them everywhere. I'll mm -hmm. put some post-its on my mirror in the bathroom, or yeah. I have a whole bunch of things that I, if a thought comes, I'll just write it down. And I have these to my right. And then at the end of the day, I'll go through them. Yeah. And some of them that feel really inspiring, I might put into my passion planner, for example. Right. Um, other things are, you know, things that I get to do or you know, what's typically called the to-do list. And that's important too. Let's yeah. say that um, I'm focused on a project that has a, a deadline in the next couple of hours and I really need to keep my focus there. Well, our brain is designed to think and create and do all these things. And ooh, yeah. something pops into my head, which could distract me. But what I've learned is to just write the thought on the post-it. Right. Because then it kind of informs my brain. Okay, thank you, heard you got it. Yeah. I'm not going to lose it. It's right here. And I can stay focused on that thing that, is you know currently needing my energy. So things right. like that. So I guess the, the way I would say it in a short question is, what are the things that I can put in place, structures or processes, alerts, post-it notes, a journal, like whatever works for me, what are those things I can just kind of keep in front of me to help me get into the new habit and have a little more self-awareness about that habits that I'm really trying to cultivate? I like that. I like that a lot. And I love the idea of the post-it notes because a lot of times I would stick them on my desk and it would be so helpful just to have those little post-it notes and reminders. And even if you put something inspirational on one or two of them, just to give you a little bit of a, a pump me up or, you know, cause a lot of times just those little positive inspirations can really, you know, do really good for the mind also, I think too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I guess coming full circle, one other thing I might share is um, oftentimes I, I work with my clients and as part of the work we do, we do a, a life timeline exercise like where that. we go back as far as we can remember and uh, note really significant and meaningful things that happened in our life. 
because then those sorts of things not only help us with, again, coming full circle, that first values exercise that we talked about, but it kind of is a continuous reminder of those things. Not that they were significant events, but what it triggered in me, what I felt in that moment, you know, and it can be positive or negative so that we can get a, a whole understanding, right? We want to look at this wholly of those things again, that, um, that really, really energize me. And then the things that actually uh, drain my energy and then find the harmony between the two. Right. I like that. I like that a lot. And what are some other things that we could do also that we haven't, you haven't spoke about in order to understand thyself and to order to, and to really, you know, build in, you know, your, that idea of who you are as a person and then be able to, you know, become that person and really live that happy, productive life. Absolutely. I think part of it um, is really about getting feedback. So I have a version of myself that I think I'm living, but yeah. how are other people feeling in my presence? Right. And that's, I mean, look, it's easy to be a monk in a cave, but it's mm -hmm. when you start to then get out into the world and practice with these sorts of things. Am I truly living my values in the way I think I am? Yeah. And people closest to me can um, hopefully in a safe way share when I am and when I'm not. How am I expressing those values, for example, with my children, with my boss, with my spouse? Do I want to even share about yeah. some of those values that feel meaningful to me and and maybe have my team also go through a similar exercise? Because then when we know each other's, we can find the shared meaning, right? Yeah that exists with all the values in place. And then like how do that. my personal values align with yours? Right. Yeah, that's important. And it is very important because so many times people have this perception of who they are, but the people around them don't see you as that, you know, but, you know, and I, I think that person has to be open-minded also and really accept, you know, that, you know, if, if more than one person is saying the same thing over and over and over again, then obviously there's an issue. And obviously you need to really take that constructive criticism, you know, and really think about, okay, you know, everyone's saying, you know, maybe I, I do this or I behave like this or, you know, and so forth. And maybe it's time that I, you know, look at myself more honestly, and maybe there's some changes I can incorporate in my life to make myself a better person. And, you know, and others could relate to me and even maybe get closer to me because a lot of times people will behave a certain way or they'll act a certain way. They're not even aware of it because that's the environment they grew up in. So they're thinking it's normal, but to a good majority of people, it's not. And it actually can push people away and instead of bringing people closer together. Absolutely. What you say is spot on, Stacey, uh, you know, looking for those patterns or those themes because more than one person has shared something similar. And as part of that kind of throwing away the outlier as well, like your teenage daughter or your teenage son <laughs> yeah. might not be the perfect person from whom to get feedback. And at the same time, you know, just playing with it and being a little playful yeah. with it and right. humorous and taking it all in stride. And again, linking to one of the first things we talked about, right? Giving yourself ease and grace, always, always mm -hmm. give yourself ease and grace. We're all human. I think the more we can accept ourselves as we get to know ourselves better flaws and all. Yes. Right. The easier life becomes in a lot of ways and the better relationships we have because they're stronger and yeah. healthy, right? Vibrant health and physical and emotional health, because, you know, we're really working on ourselves in a way that, again, to your point is trying to help us become the best person we can be and bring with that our unique purpose and why we're here, you know, to life and business and family. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think that that's so important because, and I think honesty is key because sometimes people have a hard time looking at them, looking at, at themselves in an honest way. You know, they don't, you know, they don't want to look at the flaws. And I think sometimes it's because they fear change or they fear, they fear, you know, if I do change, maybe I'm not going to like who I became, you know, or what's, you know, what's going to happen if I, if I change, you know, who I am, you know, the fear of rejection from others, I think too play a part of that. What do you think? think. Absolutely. 100%. And why I think feedback is often, I think, seen as some sort of event when in reality, at least my reality, my view, we're constantly giving people feedback all the time. 
even through our body language or so it's interesting because one exercise that has never failed me knock on wood um it's a mirror exercise that i do um every single day twice a day so when i wake up in the morning i look yeah. in the mirror i look at myself in the mirror because the eyes don't lie the body doesn't yeah. lie <laughs> yeah. so i look at myself in the mirror and i i just set my intention for the day yeah. And then at the end of the day, before I go to bed, you know, after I brush my teeth or whatever, I'll do it again. And I'll just say, how did I do? Mm -hmm. How did I do? And then, you know, and it's just, it's just a way to keep me kind of honest with myself. Yes. Because to your point with feedback, it's a tricky thing and not everybody feels safe receiving it and or giving it. Oh yeah. So some of that feedback I might be getting is someone being very polite with me because he or she doesn't want to hurt my feelings. Right. right. That's why the mirror exercise is important because like I said, you, you, you just, you can't trick what shows up in the eyes and the body. The body never lies. Neither do the eyes. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's so true. I always say that the eyes are kind of like the entrance to the soul. You know, yeah. you could really, if you look at a person's eyes, you know, especially when they're talking to you, you really could see you can see through to what they're really feeling. And then you, you can, you can tell, you know, what they, what their true intentions, their true emotions are, you know, and what they're, what they're really, you know, what's really going on in their head. And people don't realize that, but your, your body language and your, your eyes, especially are, I always say the eyes are, are the uh, entrance to the soul, because if you really look at a person's eyes, you can really tell what's going on to a certain extent to a very large extent actually i think oh, i love that i totally totally resonate and love that yes yes if, if people like so we we covered a lot of different things about learning our, our ourself we covered the values we covered tasks we covered about you know draining yourself not to, how ways not to drain yourself to take breaks and you know we talked about the timeline which i love and, you know, looking at our flaws and, and, you know, really working on, you know, changing some of those flaws and being honest with ourselves and, you know, making changes. And I love the fact that you talked about looking in the mirror because so, you know, I, I even say that so many times, it's like, when you look in the mirror, do you like who you see, you know, <laughs> I love it. If you, if you don't like what you see in the mirror, that reflection, then it's time to really be honest and say, well, changes do I need to make? You know, what, what little tweaks, what little goals do I have to create in order to get, you know, by the end of the day, I could look in the mirror and say, all right, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Maybe not all in one day, but I'm getting there, you know? And, and what are other ways, you know, that you, you might suggest, you know, did we cover all the bases or are there some other things to really understand thyself? So I think we've covered a good portion of the bases. I guess maybe one last thing I might share is with regard to progress. I think oftentimes we believe and or have been taught that progress is like the hockey stick mm -hmm. or, you know, it's somehow going upward. Right. And I would offer that progress looks nothing like that. <laughs> looks <laughs> nothing like that. I might go this way and then I might drop down here. I might go completely backwards. I mean, it's yeah. all over the map. And so for me, consistency is the key. So consistent, smaller steps over a period of time. That's what's really sustainable. I know we yeah. read a lot and hear a lot and we live in a world, I think, where there's just maybe a tendency for instant gratification. And we want to jump off that cliff and build the parachute on the way down and have the next new big idea. And at the same time, those things are short-lived. It's like the five minutes of fame, right? Yeah. Consistent, small, honest steps. Yeah. For me, that's what wins the day. That's what oh, wins the day. I agree. I agree. Can I agree totally? You know, you're gonna have your ups and downs, and there is no such thing as quick gratification. And if you do have it, it like you said, it's just for a very short period of time. It doesn't mm -hmm. last. And the things that do last is when you do make those small tweaks and you work at it and you stay consistent. Eventually, you will start to snowball and start to reach your goals. But you're gonna have your ups and downs, and even when you are snowballing up. There are going to be times when you start to snowball down. That's just life in general. That's just, just how life 
life roles, you know, but you, if you stay consistent and then you know the tools, especially the tools that you talked about today, if you incorporate them into your life and make them, a, make it so natural that you don't even realize you're doing it, you know, you just, you just, you know, it's something that you, you've incorporated in your life and you just do it on a normal basis. It will help you you know, understand who you are, who that authentic self is and understand when you're going away from that authentic self or you're not happy with who you are at that moment, you can learn the steps and the tools so you can actually start to change and become that authentic self because you don't want to live life for others. You want to live life for yourself. You want to, you want to look in the mirror and be happy with who you are. And you want to, at the end of the day, you know, be happy with the person you created within, you know, and you, it's not about making others happy. And, you know, a lot of times people do that. It's all, you know, they just, they worry about status, satisfying others, but at the end of the day, you have to be happy with yourself because if you're not happy, it doesn't matter what, you know, what others think. It doesn't matter how many boats or cars or houses you have. You will not be happy if you're not happy with your authentic self. So I think those are great ideas. Now, if people uh, want to get in touch with you, where can they get in touch with you? Thank you for asking. So I'm definitely on, you know, some of the socials like LinkedIn and Instagram and, and Facebook um, I also have a website that I think you'll probably list in the show notes um, as a way to maybe learn some about my programs and whether, you know, if people are interested in learning more or maybe getting some coaching around some of these sorts of things, they can definitely reach me there, my website and through the, through social media. And so you, and also for, if for today's conversation, if you wanted to emphasize on some important aspects about today's conversation, what are some of the things you'd like to summarize and, and, and make people remember that, that are really important in today's conversation? I guess for me, Stacey, the, the know thyself piece is, is really a powerful discovery opportunity for every person who's willing to take the first step. Yes. And the journey of a thousand miles starts with that first step. And how cool could it be to actually put a little time, energy, effort and in getting to know ourselves yes. in ways that then circle back to other, because to your points earlier, when it's almost like when you're in that flow and let's just say you've had this amazing day where everything just clicked and it was like just one of those awesome days. Why would we want that every day? or as yeah. close to every day as possible. Because when yeah. I'm in that space, I know people feel differently around me. I know my relationships feel stronger mm -hmm. and more fun and more fulfilling. I know my work is you know, something that's fueling me. So yeah, why wouldn't we want that? I guess is the question I would ask. Yeah. No, 100%, 100%. Now, if people wanted to um, maybe do a coaching session, they would just come onto your website and they can, they can contact you there. Is that the best place to contact you? Yes, I can send a link that would be helpful to have them be able to connect direct with me through my website, absolutely. Excellent. And do you have a, a newsletter on your website that people could sign up to? Well, what I do have, and this will link to the next episode we talk um, about in your series, um, that I have a free e, uh, mini ebook available for people and it's about mindsets. So oh, nice. it links to what we're talking about here and some of the mindsets maybe that might get in the way of us really understanding ourselves. So for me, it's very connected. And yes. so how can we learn about mindsets and those limiting things, those limiting beliefs to help us uh, launch into the limitless potential? So there's a, there's a connection there for me. So they can pick up that ebook on my website as well. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Susan. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming on the show today. You know, this is such an important topic and it's something that so many people, like we mentioned earlier, you know, they look to understand themselves and, or they're not happy with themselves and they do want to find that authentic self. So today's conversation was so impactful, so invigorating. And I, I just thank you so much for coming on the show today to share these, you know, these steps and tools to, to help people really understand who they are as a person and how they could even better them themselves to get to become that authentic self that they want to be that will make them happy and help them strive to new levels of life so thank you so much for being on the show today thank you thank you Stacey very much you have a great day you too